Everyone, to be him. Who's excited for some foreclosure? Let's talk yes. foreclosures. Bunch of good stuff. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I just can't figure out which part of it I should just start telling you. <laughs> so because much. It's just like well, so much. <laughs> you so know? What, I, what I'd like to do is, if we can, um, we'll start with some Q and A because some of these guys are making these calls. And they're already talking to people, so maybe they have some questions. We can kick off with that, and then um, if you have something, Nigel, you can jump into that too. Yep, sure. Yeah. So. Who has a question? Let's shoot. What What Why were you kick it off with? Um, any questions? If anybody has questions, what's that? Yeah, I was just like going to say who who has dealt with the homeowner. That being difficult, I know at least a couple of you have. We've been talking during this whole week. So. I know we've been getting a lot of uh, the people that we have been getting a hold of. <clears throat> several of them have said, you know, we've got the situation handled. It's handled. Um, so one of the responses to that that we, you know, had talked about using was, hey, OK, that's great. We just wanted to make sure. You didn't need any help stopping the foreclosure. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I personally haven't been able been able to use that response yet. I haven't got anybody since we talked about that. Um, but could you maybe speak to that? You know that aspect of it and dealing with folks. I know a lot of folks are in denial and heading yeah. The same, and that that was one of the subjects that I was going to talk about today uh, about the five like the psychological um stage of the foreclosure when people going through that and um like how the whole thing like starts and i i have kind of like on detail uh so i will go through that um you know because all of them at, at the beginning when they get that they're on denial Oh, I'll take care of it. Or I, I have someone that is going to help me out. That's not going to happen to me. You know, so we as an advocate, we have to just be there for them to to let them know that we are here to help them out. You know, and and we have to just come as genuine as and compassionate as we can because we're trying to help them out so they won't get into a trouble, you know, and understand what the trouble is. I mean, most of the time, they don't know what is going to happen. And that happens to most of us. When, when you go do something and you don't know how it's done or what is going to happen, you automatically want to pull back. You automatically want to do your defense mechanism will just shut you down and will make stop you from going forward. So therefore, these people, they they always resist. They always go and say, oh no. And they haven't told their family. They haven't, they even haven't told themselves. They don't believe that that's what's happening. So uh, it just you just have to keep that op door open and keep saying that you know we're home we, we are homeowner advocate we're here to help you out so this is my number this is you know how you can contact me any question you have you can call and I'll be here to walk you through the steps. The main important thing is you need to know the step. Then you'll be able to educate them. That is the most important thing because we don't want to be blind leading a blind. And that what their prognosis is going to be, you know, if day 30, they didn't talk to their lender, day 45, What's going to happen if they still don't talk to their lender, you know, and 
by day 120, that's it. You, you're going to get, you, you're pretty much going to start run out of options, you know, that options that you be able to do easily and not have foreclosure or a timeline on the back of your neck, you know? So it's pretty important. So it's just, I, I would say first, educate yourself with the process, which I, I you know, I'm going to go through and show you guys what are those process is. And uh, that way you can educate the homeowner, you know, you're right now like 45 days behind. You know what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. Just to let you know, so you can have that in the back of your head to make sure that how you're going to mitigate that. You know? Right. So, I have a question, Lenny. Um, How fast... Uh, can a bank typically do a loan modification? You know, at what point is it too late for us to offer that as a solution? Definitely 37 days before the auction. Okay. 37, 37 days before the auction per CFBB, which is consumer finance, they're not obligated to look at any kind of workout. So the sooner we get to them, the better is going to be. And you guys have to understand loan modification is something that it requires bank approval. I know that this word has been, oh, we just, you, you just go get a loan modification or you just go get, a, you know, a forbearance or, you know, you ask them put the loan and, you know, your pass due behind and the back of the loan. That's not the case. The lender has to approve it. It's not just because you know what that process, what that is, it's going to happen. They still have to go through loan. Uh, they, they still have to go through qualification. Even their deed in lieu has to be qualified. Mm -hmm. Even though that they are paying, they're trying to just give away the house to the lender that they need to be qualified for that. It's just not, you know, like, oh, I, that's what I'm going to do. Everything is qualification. So the sooner that they we get to them, the sooner they come to the realization that that is what, that's what the process is, that's how the bank works, then they'd be able, we'll be able to help them out to mitigate that, you know? Can you re uh, say the rest of that again for the that question Graham asked? So 37 days before the auction, the bank is not obligated to. Yeah. So to once, so once the once it's gotten down to 37 days before, it's too late. But up until that time, you're. It's. I would not say it's too late, but again, it is in discretion of the lender if they want to work out. If they want to accept the workout, you know, or anything like that. Obviously, if the homeowner has been constantly filed bankruptcy, they haven't paid their loan for like five years. And all of a sudden, 37 days before the auction, they're coming in and say, oh, you know, can you help me out? Can you stop the auction? You know, this is what I'm going to do. And the, the, the lenders like. I'm sorry, where have you been? Because by law, between 35 days to 120 days of delinquency, the lender has to make contact with them. Okay? 35 days to 45 days, they have to make a contact. After 45 days, it has to be a phone call or a person contact. And most of the time, they will hire a third party, um, you know, a, a company, I've been working for them some, that has to go door knock the house, talk to the homeowner and say, hey, I have your lender on the phone. 
and they're trying to help out. What can we do? How you know they want to know what they can do to help you to get back to your you know um, paying your mortgage so you can keep your house. You know, and um, but if the homeowner has opt out of no contact, then the lender has no option to talk to them or contact them. You know, Understood. yeah, per law, they can't contact them. So therefore, they just go through their process and they just going to be you know, they're going to foreclose. And that's why some of the homeowners like, I didn't get any notification. I didn't get any, you know, uh, mail or anything. It's like, no, per law, that's, there's like a bunch of laws through the history has been mitigated for homeowners to protect them from foreclosure by law, the lender cannot start a foreclosure before 120 days. They cannot do that. So the homeowner have an option within 120 days to come back and, you know, work with the lender with some kind of a workout. And if they don't do that, then there's really nothing can be done with, you know, they can't do anything. So when they first, their first payment will be missed, that's where the late charges start occurring. And the lenders like, you know, has to have a live contact by federal law requirement. And, you know, no later than 36 days of the delinquency. And they have to start the loss mitigation option. So, you know, nice. they literally try to work it out with them, you know, so. When you say by law, the lender cannot start the foreclosure until 120 days. Mm -hmm. When you say start foreclosure, does that mean actually getting, you know, what does start the foreclosure mean? Because I know they get notices and everything first. Yeah, they get they get a notice of delinquency. Okay. Right. At 120 days, that's I mean, uh, that's when they're gonna start sending, you know, the loss mitigation notice. So the notice of sale at that time? Not not notice of sale that you your loan, you are delinquent and you're in danger of foreclosure. So the notice of default is being sent out. At 120 days. At 120 days. That's when the notice of default is going to get started. And that's nationwide? That's pretty much nationwide. Depending, depending on some states, it could be, you know, depending on judicial and non-judicial, it's, you know, red state, blue state, it's kind of different, I see. you know? So, but in general, 120 days, that's pretty much nationwide. Okay. That's what's going to happen. You know, right. so yeah, when, when that, when, by the third or and fourth uh, payment, pretty much they accelerating, you know, the foreclosure. And you know, they, they'll send the NOD and they want that either be reinstated or not, you know? And they they call that that period of the time between like the from the 30 days to 120 days, they call that the cure to default or cure period, you know? So then after that, they're going to apply the loss mitigation and depending on what kind of a loan they have, whether it's a Freddie, uh, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae lane, uh, loan, you know, they'd be able to offer them a different stuff, but this is only if the homeowner ask for it. If the homeowner ask for it and be vigilant in 
keep calling and trying to work with them. So other than that, you know, they're not going, they're kind of going to corner themselves in. You know? Thank you. You're There's a couple welcome. questions in the chat. I'm sorry. You, yeah. Uh, Virginia said, can the bank change the terms of the loan if they do a loan mod? Yeah. They can do anything. It, it's it's you, the first thing I want you to guys to um, understand. Put yourself in the shoe of a homeowner and and the bank. Think about it. Like you have a car that you want to sell, okay, and you want to sell it sub to. You know, you want to take payment. Depending on your situation, you're the boss. You, you know, you, oh, yeah, uh, you know, if I like you, I change the term. You know, I keep the term like what I have right now. I'm working the, you know, the lender has kept the term the way it is at three and a half percent for these people. Put their twenty thousand dollars that they are behind on the back of the loan at zero interest and they're like just to start your payment from next month whatever you were behind forget it we just put it whenever you sold it we get paid on that and we just want you to start your payment you know like no change no nothing but there were others that i have seen that their loan was three and a half percent jumped to six and a half percent that by itself is like detrimental for the homeowner. That that's like that three and a half percent. There's that's a lot of money for them to be able to, you know, um, to catch up. And then they had a balloon, meaning that they like dissected their last uh, the their past due, and they said every month you're gonna pay certain amount added to your uh, payment for another six months or whatever. You know, they, they'll do whatever they want. It is in their prerogative and they just have to talk to the, to the investors and, you know, see what they have put in and all of that. It's just the, you know, number games, number games. Yes, they can. They can do whatever they want. You know, and um, I see TJ says, does the clock stop when the loan mod is in review? Any kind of workout, the clock will stop. The moment the homeowner says that I am willing to work out and the lender says, okay, we're going to help you out. The auction will get stopped. The process, because again, by law, the the lender cannot have do a foreclosure process. They can't have their cake and eat it too. You know, they can't be processing foreclosure while they're trying to get them a loan, you know, some kind of a workout, whether it's a loan modification, forbearance, or, or anything like that. So that's uh, that's just how they work. Okay, so it's the Virginia say, how long does it usually take to learn if a loan mod has been accepted or does it every bank by every state? Well, you, they just have, you know, homeowner, there's a certain criteria that the, the lender asks for and certain documents that the lender asks for. A, you know, usually they want the bank statement, uh, you know, like pay stub tax it used to be that they had to supply the their uh income tax but now they just get a authorization that they just go straight to irs to be able to see all of those stuff and when they go through all of that then they going to figure out what kind of a modification they be able to give them according to what their income is sometimes they don't get approved 
you know, it's not just because they are applying for loan modification, they're going to get accepted or they get a modification just because they want to get a forbearance, they're going to get the forbearance. No. All of those depend on what the lender is going to accept or not and what is they're going to give them. So, you know, sometimes it's just, it, that's why it's best to start these process early, get them to come to the table early, so that way we'll be able, they'll be able to get help. You know, and then I, I don't know, I've no I've uh, um, uh, mentioned or not, there are also other organizations that they can help them out. Like, you know, HUD Council, you know, urban how, housing development, they're, they're the one that also they can call the HUD Council and they'll be able to tell them what they can do or cannot do. And there's a organization called NACA, it is N-A-C-A dot com. And they're a huge organization for helping out homeowner with their foreclosure. That's how I got mine. They had a, they had a convention. They do have, they're originally in Atlanta, but they travel all around US and they come. And I've never seen anything like that before. And I'm just like, they're amazing. They came in to LA, huge convention. And people just line up and every lender has a representative there to help the homeowner get their modification or get their workout right then and there. So they come with the, all their paperwork and, you know, they make a big hooray when they give them a modification or they give them a forbearance or whatever it is. And and that's not only for people with foreclosure, for low income people that they are looking for, um, they are looking for um, funding to buy their first home. Right now, at this moment, NACA has a four and a half percent interest rate for people that they want to buy their home at w when they are their low income. They don't need a credit check. They just need a payment history. And you have to just go through some training and then that's it. And you can buy whatever when you qualify for that. You know, so, and then there's hardest hit fund. That was what I was, for, was forgetting last time. I couldn't say the hardest hit fund for um, homeowner that uh, they're in foreclosure, which we talked about it last week, that every state has been, has an allocation that is just strictly for homeowners that they are going on foreclosure. They just have to apply for it. You know, some of the state has exhausted and finished all their fun. Some of the uh, state, they didn't, use it and they lost their fund because they don't advertise it. I have no idea why. I have never seen an advertisement on TV about hardest hit fund that if you are in trouble and you're in foreclosure, you know, apply with this and you can get this money for free to get you back on track and keep your home but plenty for, you know, weight loss and, you know, make my butt big or, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, which is kind of sad. That's why it's like, I feel like we have, we play a big part in this to help these people to show them what is out there to, you know, to get their life together. Because sometimes it just, like I was talking to a homeowner today, her husband had cancer and passed away and she just 
she can't do it on her own anymore. I mean, physically and mentally, she's just not there and can't take care of the house. And she left the house four years ago when she lost her husband. Now the house has been sitting there for four years, you know, vacant. And, it, you know, and the lender is trying to get them come back. But these people, they're just like, they're just emotionally so exhausted that they don't even want to deal with it. And they think that the lender is some kind of a boogeyman that is going to come and, you know, eat them up over the, um, from the, you know, phone line. So, yeah. Some of us, some of us can relate to that, right? On cold calls, yeah. if you're in that same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's just it's just a matter of knowledge is power when is implemented. When you know what the process is, when you know your roadmap, then it, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to hurt you. The only reason I'd be able to pull out out of my situation just because I knew the roadmap. You know, yeah, there were times that I lost it. You know, I was like losing it, but I knew that this is how the process work. So this is normal. This is how it goes. You know? So. Any other question? I have a question. Yeah. Um. What would be the process or or a solution of of when a couple, let's say, they go into divorce mm -hmm. and they're going they're going through pre foreclosure, but let's say mm -hmm. the husband really wants to sell mm -hmm. and the wife doesn't, and they have conflict and they really can't sell because one of them doesn't want to sell. Yeah, there like a loophole or a solution to that. Well, she just have to buy his interest. You know, that's that's there's there's nothing can be done either you know like the wife has to go through like qualification again talk to the lender and say this is what's going on where we're getting a divorce i want to have the house he doesn't can we refinance it and because basically that loan needs to be only on her name Whoever wants out, their name needs to be out of the deed and out of the uh, loan. So for that, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You got to qualify for a new loan. Whether you're going to buy it outside conventionally or you just talk to the lender and, you know, the same lender that has the loan and say, hey, this is what I am trying to do. And, you know, how can I mitigate this? And of course, again, they have to go through qualification and all that stuff. And when you put it like that to for the homeowner, then they understand. Yeah, you know, if I don't qualify, I don't qualify. No matter how much I want it, I just can't have it. You know. So, it's it's uh, it's kind of straightforward. A lot of it is kind of straightforward. Some of it is just, you know. You kind of have to, like, finagle with the, you know, with the lender. So. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other question? I know, like, it's a uh, um, couple of you guys have been, like, talking to the homeowner on the phone and all that stuff. There's the, uh, um, I want to, these things, it's kind of like a time suck because homeowners are, because they are on desperate situation, they're like in the ocean, you know, looking for any kind of uh, particle to just be floating. So when and everybody and their mother are calling to give them option. But it's not really, are are they really a viable option? And are they really being truthful with them that what is going on, how everything, 
going to happen? And are they really going to uh, be able to mitigate this? So I I really want everybody to kind of like understand the question that they need to ask these people. It's it, it, so that way we'll be able to help them better. Is like, you know, have you, how long, what was your last payment? When was the last time that you paid? That obviously is going to make you understand that whether the lender is going to be more prone to help them out or not. If it's been, as I said, two years, five years versus, you know, three months, four months, that's a huge difference. And, you know, how how much are they behind? What is their payment? How much is their payment? And, you know, what have you, have you talked to your lender? Have you talked to, you know, HUD counsel? What kind of a help have you been able to get? You know? Have you tried? Have you contact your state to see if you're qualified for, uh, you know, hardest hit fund to be able to get get them uh, help you. So, and you know, what what is your goal? Are you you trying to you know, are you trying to keep the house or are you trying to you sell your house are you trying to no i are you trying to stay in your house or are you trying to you know leave so you know yeah guys are we asking that the people on the seal team that are making the calls uh are we asking that i am using that are you what what i was using is uh are you looking uh like um make the bring the mortgage current or are you considering selling but i think i'd use nahid's um suggestion are you trying to like leave into that yeah because you you when you tell them that you want to sell you know first of all you don't come out as as like you're trying to help them out we kind of like want them to understand that they were the one that making made that decision you know they want they need to come up to that term because it's such an emotional um in a hard decision you know but by asking qualifying question of you know so you know explaining clearly first of all what your position is you know why are you there you know I'm a homeowner advocate and I'm trying to just make sure you're clear on how this process goes. I know that it's very hard, but my priority is to help you find the best possible solution for the outcome. Yeah. I know this I'd, be, uh, I'd be willing to uh, role play if, if you like, because I've been through this, you know, mm. I've been through uh, actually, f through foreclosure, and um, the second time, avoided it. So, yep. if, if you want, I, I can be the uh, the person in trouble, and and you can uh, interview me. And and uh, so, I think it helps to role play. What do people think? Yeah, Nigel, no, I was actually thinking something similar, but I was going to say if we have any live calls, since we've been making calls, mm -hmm. um, who's who, QA? Who's in here? Who's running QA tonight in here? Uh, L is that you, dear, or is that who's in here? Yeah, live calls are better, so that way we can, you yeah, know, I want like real life situations. We can ask. If you guys want to ask situational questions of the calls that you're on? Let's do that. Also, uh, Virginia, did you ask your question here? Are you still in here? Yeah, I think that it was. It was. Yeah, they, 
It was in the chat. He, she answered them. Thank you. You're so you got your answer. Cool. Uh, LB, are you here? Or who, who's our QA person tonight? Yeah, we do have calls, Chad. Uh, is it specific for foreclosure? Okay. Uh, yes. So. Yep. Wednesdays is just foreclosure night. So one thing I'd like to do is get real life. Uh, so let's do this. We're going to listen to a foreclosure call and then uh, now you could tell the mm -hmm. team to stop the call. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Allie has it. So Allie, if you could pick one, please, dear. Just pick one here. Let's play it. And then we'll stop it when I says like stop right here. We'll learn how to answer or how to guide the call more efficiently and effectively <clears throat> because like one thing I just realized right now was um, they basically have two routes, right? Are we trying to save the house and stay in the house and look for a path forward there? Or is it even if we get it caught up, we're just going to be right back in this situation in three months from now anyway. So we need to look at a, a different solution. Right. Is there a third option there, Nigel? Is there, those are the two paths forward, That's it. right? Either they want right. to keep the house or they just want to leave. Right. Okay. So now, guys, what we want to do is do what we did with the cold calls and do with our acquisitions calls. We're going to do the same thing for the foreclosure calls. We're going to listen to these, and then we're going to start thinking, okay, how what's the best way to ask this question to get the favorable response that we want and get them to start opening up to us um, you know, and go down that path? I think as we start to do that and we hear real live calls with real life situations uh, yep. with our expert here, to help guide us like yeah you shouldn't say that you should say this or hey did you know this uh, oh i didn't even know that was an option okay yeah so let's do that uh ali do you have a call that we can play like maybe a i don't know five ten minute call yeah so i have um a six minute 55 second seven minute call perfect Let's let's play that one and then uh Knight, if you want to just say like if you put your hand up for pause, uh Ali are, Ali, you're gonna play it, Nicole? Yeah, I gotta yeah. If you can just keep I, an eye on Nahid and uh if she like says stop, we'll stop right there so she can say okay, right. Cause what I, I think it'll go better if we stop it live, night as you hear something, just be like stop right there so I you can explain. Yeah if we if we said something wrong like yes yeah, that wasn't true we shouldn't say that or if it's like hey this is a good option at this point to say something like this okay. and we'll, we'll get real life practice and learn a whole sure. lot more that yeah. way i think i love it let's do cool. okay uh, ali when you're ready we can roll hello Hey, Linda, my name's Graham. I'm calling about your house on Domingo Drive. Do you still have that property? Yes, I don't. It's in Chapter 11. It's with the Okay. Train. We still have that property. That's where I know we're used to coming in as we're, you know, we're a real estate investor. So that's that's the first thing that we're going to ask. But this class of people, we're just trying to help get them to understand the situation that they're they can't deal with this uh, problem anymore. So when you when you come in is like, hey, my name is Graham. Um, you know, um, I'm looking for so and so. You know, I understand that you know you're going. Um, through some difficult time. Um, it, I'm a homeowner advocate and our goal is to help out people that they're going through foreclosures. Instead of, are you still having, you know, the house or not? Does that make sense? Just because we don't want to come in and they're they're everybody you want to be different because everybody's calling them wanting to buy their home in one way or another they're trying to get to that point of like you know how can i buy your home are you going to sell your home so if you're coming it's like 
my focus is you trying to help you in whatever you problem is to solve your problem, then the possibility of them wanting to help you is going to be a lot better. Nahid, um, I've been asking, has anyone discussed with you the possible options you might have in the situation you're in? Would that be a good intro? Yes, that would be a good, perfect intro. Yeah. So what's our, let's just cover that real quick. What's our intro? Like, um, let's spitball this here, guys. So we, we uh, ring, ring, hello. Hi. I mean, obviously we're still going to address them, right? Like, hey, Nahi, this is Shad with Homeowners uh, Care at, what is it called? Homeowners Care, Care Advocate. Advocates. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long one. Yeah. It is. <laughs> we can just say home, homeowner advocate because they care. Yeah. We got homeownercareadvocates.com. I tried homeowneradvocates.com, but that was already taken okay. quite some time ago. So why don't we just stick with homeowner care or homeowner advocates? Uh, yeah. And then what's the next thing? So has anyone discussed with you possible solutions for um, Let's the make situation sure. you're in? And then that way we can refine it and then you guys can start perfecting it. And then we'll, that way, like, just like how we figured out our cold call script and our lead manager script, we'll start getting this one. You can, you can start with like, you know, we know that you have some issues with your lender, but first of all, you want to make sure that you're talking to the homeowner. Okay. Oh yeah. That's a good point. You want to talk to the, you know, hi, you know, first introduce yourself. Because if you catch me and say, hey, is this Nahid? I will be like, forget you. I'll hung up. Because I don't want anyone that is not going to introduce themselves first to me. So I know where this call is going. Okay? 100%. Yeah. We preach that heavily. Yeah. I, I hang up on people. If I if I have to ask who are you and you're asking who I am, yeah, nope, we're not yeah. doing that. Yeah, or or when you when they call is like, oh hi Nahid, and I'm like, I already know that you don't know me, and I you don't have anything that I want to be involved in. You want something from me, you know what I mean? You're not here to help me out. So the first thing introduce yourself say who you are what your intention is and can you talk to so and so you know that's the homeowner can i speak hi my name is nahid i'm a homeowner advocate which is kind of in disguise you are not talking about foreclosure we're not talking about delinquency or nothing like that i'm a homeowner you know home owner care advocate and you know our company helps people out with their situ with different situation. And I was wondering if I, if certain, you know, Mr. So-and-so is there and I can talk to them. And if they're not, then you will not. You, that's but I feel like, like with that, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you give people that out, like, oh, is James there? They're going to be like, that's an easy out of, nope, I don't know, James, sorry. And hang yep. up. So yeah. how do we avoid that? Well, we, you guys already know this. We've made 70, 80 million dials. We know how to do that. So you do what we do with the cold call, right? We assume, hey, Nahid, this is Shad. I'm a homeowner advocate. I was just calling you about the property on Main Street. Our team helps families. You know, with the, that, uh, nah, That's as far as I got. Now I need to get to the rest of it. I did like the part that you said, we know that you're having some issues with your lender. I don't know what to say after that. But I'm writing these down and we can start to map this out. And then we're literally making a couple hundred dials a day right now. That's going to ramp up to a few thousand dials per day on just mm -hmm. foreclosure. So we're going to figure this out literally within a week or two. We'll know exactly what the perfect intro is. Yeah. I mean, the, as I said, it's like my thing is like, hello, my name is Nahid. I'm a homeowner advocate helping homeowners with their situation is Mr. So-and-so is here that I can talk to. I don't talk about foreclosure. I don't talk about home, yep. the home address. I don't talk about none of that. Okay. 
I want genuinely to help them out. If that person is, says he's not there, okay, this is my name. This is my number. Can I leave a number for you? You know, and can I get in touch with them? Can they call me later? Of course, you call back later and stuff like that. And, you know, eventually they're going to be able to um, work out with you. And if they don't, then that's fine. Because, you know, you cannot help someone that will not reach out for your help. Because their weight, it's going to drag you down. So these are the time suck. You know, if they don't want to get help, no matter what you do, they won't, you won't be able to help them. So all you can do, you just keep asking, you just keep calling them. And if you can get them on the phone and be able to uh, get them slowly, slowly, you know, uh, to the table, then that will be fine. And when you show genuine interest, then they'll be able to help to like gush it out and tell you what are, you know, tell me what is my option? What can I do? You know? So. Okay. I'm taking notes here, uh, guys, everybody that's on the phone, take your notes. Uh, tomorrow's meeting, we'll kind of go over them and then we'll, we'll start practicing these. Um, yeah, we need to clean up a little bits of this, but I'm, like, we're getting the gist of it here, right? You see the thing? It's not written well. Yeah. Uh, I would take the uh, lender out. You know, I That's would just say, yeah, I, um, you know, like you can, yeah, that would be fine. I guess that would be fine. You know, that would be fine. So, so how can we? I guess yeah. let's listen to the call, guys. I want everybody that's on the call on, on making the dials. Take this rough draft and and ideate on it. Tomorrow we'll we'll talk. Kevin, are you on the SEAL team? No, I, I haven't started um dialing or anything like that. Yet. But yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take it down. You're not making dials at all on the on the dialer. No, I haven't started because I had like a schedule change when everything started. Okay, so it never. All right, no like, problem. All right. Um, so, guys, there's that. Everybody that is making dials on the SEAL team, uh, um, ID8 on it tomorrow. We'll talk about it a little bit more. Let's listen to more of that call. We've got like 10, 15 minutes on this yeah. Zoom left. Okay. Right, let's see what feedback Nani does for us, what else we can do. And we'll keep refining the intro until we get it butted up. Steve, I don't have any control over it. Oh, uh, well, what's but I, What do you want to know about the property? Well, uh, we help people going through situations like this and try to go over any options that you might have. So can I don't think me? I have any options. I'm in Chapter 11 with a trustee. Right, right. Are you going to be keeping your house? No, I don't live in that house. It was a it was a short term rental house. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Are you going to let it go to foreclosure then? Okay. Okay. When they are going to bankruptcy, they basically don't have any control. Especially if you're calling like, you know, uh, New York, Pennsylvania, like the, you know, those non-judicial states that they have to go through court and stuff like that. When they go through bankruptcy, they don't have, they, if they're not doing, if it's not chapter 13, then most likely they're not keeping the home. And when, when they apply for bankruptcy, everything gets halted, everything. And it, it, the lender cannot do anything about it. And in this call, you can tell mentally she's just like washed her hands off of that and just waiting for the bank uh, to kind of like to, for, for the judge or the bankruptcy court, just tell them what to do. You know, and you can kind of tell from her response. 
So let's let's listen to the rest of it. Yes, I've, I, uh, the trustee has already given the lender a relief of stay. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, you cut out the, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's really too bad because it's a great house. It's a very valuable house, but it probably won't pull its value at the trustee sale. Right, I'm so sorry to hear yeah, that. So, um, yeah, so if you know an investor who wants to go to the trustee sale, it's a smart move. The house has been completely renovated after it had a lot of damage from the freeze. Oh dear. It's in beautiful shape now. Yeah, that's nice. yeah, one thing one thing on this that should have been also a clue that it was a short term rental or it was a rental. So that means this homeowner definitely is not a staying in the house definitely is not their primary home. So the lender will not at all going to work out anything. You know, so it could be short sell. Yeah, the, the lender will uh, kind of do second home, but they're not as, as lenient as when is their primary home. You know, and this is already in bankruptcy court so there's they're already taking care of it for them so uh in bankruptcy court will they still entertain a short sale or no it, they get it with the realtor and put it on the market and yeah. see what happens? no you can still apply uh as a you know as a short sale you can still talk to them and see uh uh you know what it can be done with the short sale but at that time they have to the homeowner has has to uh, discharge the bankruptcy. Okay, and, and then uh, real quick, what's the difference between eleven and thirteen? A thirteen, they can stay in the house, but eleven, they can't. Or uh, the uh, thirteen is going to, they're going to uh, do a, a restructure their loan, their all their um, debt. Thirteen. Yeah. Yes, on 13, you okay. know, so they, they want to uh, keep their, their, like, they want to keep everything they have, so the judge will going to go to the bankruptcy and try to, um, you know, uh, what they call it, say, okay, this, this creditor want this much and that much and that much depending on what your income is you know you'll be able to kind of like um part like this you're gonna this much of your money goes to pay these creditor so reorganizing their payment and it could go over like they could do it in the period of three to five years okay and then on chapter 11 is they, you know, they go through like um, they restructure it only in certain circumstances, you know, and uh, uh, they like in certain, it's kind of similar than 13. You know, and they can still stay on on the house, but the the restructure and all of that stuff is going to be just for you know businesses mostly. You know, and, and uh, um, it's it's not kind of like there the it's kind of a little bit different, but kind of similar. You know, the restructure plan is it usually uh, is how do I say it? it's like with Lisa, like she would be able. That's why she's on Chapter 11, because this is her not her home, like her is not her primary. It's basically an investment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Most of the Chapter 11, it's kind of like geared toward the business and you know 
those type of things. Versus 13, it's like for her own, you know, like basically on chapter 13, it's uh, they they deal with their regular income and they, they give them an opportunity to restructure their debt and repay the creditor over time. And that's like include their mortgages and rears and, you know, their home. On the other hand, in like chapter 11 allows basically allows the individual in businesses to kind of like reorganize their debt and operation. And, you know, that it's more like your businesses or if you have investment. Does that make sense? This is what I got from ChatGBT, if that summarizes it well, while we maybe listen to the rest of this. Okay. Uh, Ali, if you want to, oh, you have a question, Ali? Yes. So yeah. a lot of times when homeowners are filing Chapter 13, from what I've seen, they usually have attorneys. And yeah. usually there's more than just the house debt that's involved. So is it beneficial for them to try to eliminate as, as much of that debt before a judge restructure, restructures it? Or is it beneficial to keep more debt when the judge restructures it? It doesn't really make any difference. It all depends on... Income. Oh, if well. and get, they're going to eliminate this, you know, if they say, I want to keep my house, but I, I don't want my, my car for the car, but they structure the payments so the house will be on that reorganization payments. Are there things you can't get rid of? Like, let's say some of those other debts include credit card debt. Um, personal loans. Those can't be like on the oh, wow. priority. You know, if they want to keep the house because they want to have a place to stay. Then they can, and, and, and their income allows that. Then they can keep it. Well, then now I guess I'm I'm kind of confused because if a chapter thirteen is them restructuring the debt, isn't that similar to like a loan modification? Uh, yes, but again, if they can't loan modification is like on chapter thirteen, since everybody is on then all the creditor know that like they send the thing to all the creditor that this is what's happening. So they either have to negotiate, like kind of like make the loan, the, like negotiate, you know, so lender is going to give them loan modification, whatever they can. Creditor, the credit card that says, okay, I'll take, you know, 5,000 instead of 20,000 and all of that stuff. And those all become one payment that he has to pay. That's how the chat, the bankruptcy works. Okay, but if the homeowner, for example, lost a job, is disabled, unable to work, chapter 13 isn't viable because they have no, no. funds or income. Yeah. Okay. You know, by the, but at that, they just buying time so they don't get foreclosed on. Hmm. You know, and that's when, like, you know, if their foreclosure is tomorrow, then they can apply for bankruptcy and bankruptcy will halt everything. You know, and that will stops. And now they have time to do to request from their lender. Can you do a loan modification for me? Can we do a short sell? So can you? Can, Something like that. Okay. So last question. Okay. So bankruptcy isn't a end all be all solution. So even after they restructure the debt and they say, hey, your new payment collectively is 2000 per month, that homeowner essentially has a balloon for when they need to refinance or 
purchase all that yeah. or pay off all that debt? Yeah. I mean, the judge will decide what that is going to be, how that's going to work. And they have to obey by law of what the judge will tell them. So between the bankruptcy attorney and the uh, a judge, they kind of like structure out that, okay, so now with all these debts, you have to pay $500 a month. So it'd be paid, you know, hundred bucks to this, that, the other. So that's how it works. Okay. And then last, last, last question. Is there a, um, like a set amount of time that homeowners have to have to wait in between filing bankruptcy or can they do it over and over and over again to extend that time? Yeah, they, they, um, they, they can't, they cannot do it like over. I think it's like um, once every two years or three years that they can um, apply, do a bankruptcy, you know? But it's, you know, but by that time, the lender knows their game. You mm -hmm. know, so the the chances of them finding some kind of a solution, it's going to be grim. And they, the lender can take the bank, take the house out of the bankruptcy because they can go to judge and say, look, they have done, they, they have filed this this time. They have filed this time and this time. They're just trying to just buy time so they can stay at the house for free. So we don't want to play this game no more. And the judge will take the house out of bankruptcy and take it to foreclosure. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you for breaking that down. No problem. Yeah. All right. We have, uh, well, technically we're over out of time, but can we, uh, Ali, how much time, uh, how many, how many minutes are left on that call? You got like five. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's listen to the rest of it, if you don't mind, right? And then we'll, if you can give us like a, this is a bankruptcy, so I don't know what we can do, yeah. but let's just listen to the call, see where, you know, where it went and then what okay. we can do. Okay. Well, how much, uh, if it, we are in, you know, we could buy the house before the sale. I mean. Well, you'd have to talk to the, I think the trustee's already given over to the lender. You'd have to talk to the lender, and I don't know who that is. I don't have any control over that. Right, I see. Wow. So, uh, I hate this to go on your records, you know, if we could. No, my record's in... already a mess. Yeah. You would be very smart to go to that trustee sale because it probably you'd probably be able to get it for a much better price if they if it goes up for sale. The lender may pull it. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it for you. If just so you know, if it goes for over what is owed in this sale, that money belongs to you. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. My attorney is the not my attorney, but the trustee is aware of it. He wants that any overage for the estate it doesn't go well, to me. It's, I'm out of it. It should go to you if you're the person on record. Are you on the deed? Yes, I'm on the deed, but the deed is all in the Chapter Eleven trusteeship. Oh, I see. It's an asset of mine, and my assets are all with the trustee now. Oh, I see. So you have other debtors that need to be satisfied? Oh, I had I had over a hundred properties. Oh wow! I'm so sorry, Linda. Yeah, wow. What what yeah. happened to court? Bad things it? happen to good people. <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. I, Interest well, rates went up. I always say to people, just remember, elections have consequences. Yes, indeed. I, I lost all my apartments uh, back in 2009. I had over 100 yeah, doors. That's when, the, that's when that first crisis came about. Yes. I, so I lost when them interest all. rates went up, the lenders got greedy. They wanted to be able to have their money out at 8 and 9% instead of 4%. Yeah, I had to file uh, bankruptcy. Uh, I lost, uh, I lost it all. It was over five million dollars worth of real estate. Yeah, 
of a hundred. Yeah, that, it's heartbreaking. Believe me, I understand what you've been through, and I'm sure you understand what I'm going through. I do. I do. And I'm 83 years, years old. It wasn't what I thought I'd be doing at this stage in my life. Yeah, I, and I'm in the same boat. I'm in the mid sixties. You know, um, this happened right. uh, twenty years. Well, not twenty years, whatever that is. You know, it's years. very yeah. unfortunate because, in yeah. my opinion, if Trump had been elected, interest rates would not have jumped, and right. the economy would have stayed strong. Sales yeah. would have been good. Right. Things have changed. Yeah. If we get another chance in November, tell all your friends. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you got a good sense of humor, Linda, despite what you got. No, I have to, to be honest with you. You know, yeah. it's interesting. People say to me, you like Trump? I say, I don't like him. I'm not going to invite him to my house for dinner. Right. But he did good things for the economy. Yeah. He was a businessman, not a politician, you see. Yeah, he I... knew how to, how to do things. Yeah, and I agree. And unfortunately, we've got a a real weak president at this time. It's the worst yeah. I've ever seen in my lifetime. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So it's God, unfortunate. We don't have great that. choices. I wish right. Trump would keep his mouth shut, but he doesn't. Right. He keeps saying stupid things that just make yeah. more people hate him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. we we're, we're no anyway, one's perfect, if you know darling. somebody who wants a good property, they should go to that auction. And I'm not sure that it'll go. I think that the lender is smart enough to know he can do better with a good realtor. Yeah, probably so. All right, Linda, I appreciate the conversation. I'm sorry you're going through all this. I really, really am. I yeah, know thank what you. Is. I appreciate your your compassion. Yeah. All right, Linda. <laughs> but you All know right. what? Life is life is good. Otherwise, I'm blessed it to is. have a wonderful husband of 63 years. Awesome. Well, that is wonderful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Carry your blessings. You're amazing, Linda. All right. So you you should do well. You know. I mean, these I, things. I, I expect to come out of it. You will. You will. I can tell. <laughs> it's a pleasure meeting you on the phone. You have a good thank day. You. Nice talking to All you right. as well. And I. I'm sorry, I can't help you out with that property. Oh, I'm, I was intending to help you out. That was the idea, you know, because of uh, yeah. what I've been through. Yeah. But, all anyway, right. God bless you. Take you. care. Thanks for yeah, calling. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Hello. Hi, Linda. Yeah, you can you can see the anger stage on their her voice that she is now blaming other people for things that happened to her. You know, it was the president. It was the interest rate. I'm this and that and you know so uh but yeah at the end of it we all you know we're the one that uh steering our own ship yeah unfortunate things happens but at the end of it you know so yeah he's as now you see that with chapter 11 because he, she had all these doors the lender is not you know is not willing to work out with them. It, that's what the chapter 11 is for. And, uh, so, yeah. So, Graham, what I wanted to know, because I, I don't know how we could help that lady, apparently not much, but um, kudos for trying for the surplus funds, but are all 100 properties getting filed in the BK or? Yeah, all 100, yep. Yeah. She's like, losing them all. That's why I brought my story out to identify with her. Wow. That's sad. Yeah. Well, well, what happens, you know? Um, what I'm wondering is how, you know, what, what what was she on a bunch of arms? Like, how how did she lose a hundred because the interest rates jumped? Right. These are single family, or maybe it was multifamily. Maybe she had some multifamily rolled in there, or something. Well, if if she went through the same thing as I did, that's a presumption, of course. Is she may have been over leveraged. I mean, one of the things I did to grow to over 100 doors was leverage. Yeah. So I was over leverage, over stretch. So, and that's what's happening with a lot of multifamilies right now again because of the rise of interest rates. Yeah. Right. And so being over leverage is extremely risky yeah. and right. it brings everything you have, um, yeah. makes uh, it becomes vulnerable. And that's what's happened to her. That's 
why I was able to identify with them like that. Yeah. Now, do you know about multifamily? Like for the, this, uh, take the BK out of the scenario. If this, uh, she hadn't filed for the bankruptcy, is it similar? Similar process for multifamily as single family? Yep, same thing. It's because it's basically the lender. All all the lender cares wants their home, wants their their money. So it doesn't really matter. They're not there to manage property. They want to manage interest, right? That the money that they are making from the interest that we pay them. Right. Yeah. I know yeah. the families are hurting. I'm yeah. just wondering how this house, I guess maybe this house got sucked into the vortex of all the others. Multifamily probably pulled her down. And then she lost some of these as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, Graham, my feedback to you, uh, more questions would have been in order there. You know, like, okay, a hundred doors. Okay. Are they all in one city? Are they multifamily, single family mix? What, like, what does this look like? How did, yeah. How did you get into that situation? Yeah. Because um, a couple things. One, maybe there's more to the story here, and she's like, "No, not all of them, but some, you know, but most of them." And I still have a handful of doors. And like, okay, what are you gonna do with those or whatever? I don't know. But then also, if this lady has a hundred doors, I would bet money she has at least one or two friends that have some doors too. And maybe they haven't hit bankruptcy yet, but they're going down the same path, and they're about to be on that same, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Guys, uh, the the learning opportunity here, I think, the takeaway is um, that's a that was a really good opportunity. We might have missed this one because you know she's already too far gone to help, but maybe she has something else that we can pick at. You know, mm -hmm. a loose thread, as you as you say, Graham. You know, maybe mm -hmm. there's a loose thread you pick at and see if you can, and then if you find one, you tug on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I do you have any feedback like as far as the BK or the you know, any of the other part of the call? No, I think it just like more question would have been, you know, better to find out. And and right off the bat, when she said, like, it, this was a short term rental. And it's on BK, you should know that this is going a different direction than the regular homeowner. Because it's not. That's why I want you guys to be sufficient on knowing the process and how the process work. Then that way you can rear off the, you know, you can navigate uh, how to speak with the homeowners. And we'll get to that, you know, next week. Yeah. Good thing. Uh, Graham, call her back tomorrow or soon and be like, hey, quick question. Uh, this is new to me bankruptcies and all this is new foreclosures we're diving deep but are all the doors with one bank two banks three banks or is it with 99 different banks right depending on how many doors she has um is, is, now do you think that let's just say that like two banks are involved in this like she had her two or three banks that she like to do business with because i imagine a lot of people they do right once you find a lender you're going to keep going back to them when you mm -hmm. can right yeah, uh, maybe there's a way to, you know, kind of bring them together. And what what city was this? In? Do you remember, Graham? What market? I don't remember now. Okay. I mean, this definitely. I mean, there's there's no uh, uh, saying that he cannot, she cannot sell them, like do short sell them, or you know. But basically, the lender is. Uh, there, like the bankruptcy court is trying to restructure all of these debt. So the fact that she's saying I, it's out of my hand, it is not out of her hand. They're restructuring those loans so she can come up and say to the lender, hey, I have a solution. I can, you know, uh, I have a buyer for this. Can we work out something? You know? so." Things like that, because they basically in Chapter Eleven they're restructuring their loan, so they can, as as far as the business goes, to the you know run efficiently. So that's what the whole thing is. 
I'll give it a, a call tomorrow and, and see how many questions I can get in there without causing it too much stress. But um, yeah. And because it's not, you know, I mean, the only, but like, when she says, oh, you can go buy it at a courthouse step, does that mean, did you already give up on them? So you don't want them no more? You know, because the on chapter 11, the uh, the judge is going to restructure your, you know, your debt. So it's not really all lost. You haven't lost it yet. Or have they been already foreclosed? And uh, you told the lender that I, to, you told the bankruptcy or the court that I don't want them. You can have it. You can give it to the lender. You know. Hmm. Hey, real quick in the chat before we go, uh, Marcy had asked how long does it buy the seller, the homeowner, when they file for bankruptcy? It just um, until whenever they get discharged. So just however long it takes before the end of the the, the case, yeah. So till so whatever the case is resolved, either the homeowner just discharge it or the court will restructure the debt and then you know settles it any any time frame that you've seen for that like approximations from no, i've seen people being on bankruptcy for three four years you know yeah thank you yeah um is she allowed to rent out the the property she said it was vacant while she's going through the bk can she rent it out and or no, she lost control of it. They hand keys over and they have no, do you know? Yeah, I don't think he knows. Yeah, I'm, Graham, another good question to ask. If you get her back on the phone, if you're gonna call her, Ali has the info, she'll pass it to you tomorrow. Okay. And maybe call her back and ask, I mean, because if this is gonna drag out for a while and if things get ugly, like the banks aren't going to be able to do anything with those hundred doors like immediately. It's going to take them time as well. Yeah, um, I would imagine, and now you would know more. I don't know if you've dealt with like package deals in your short sales, but I would imagine a bank that they have multiple notes from this lady, and somebody comes in and says, "Look, I'll buy them all as a bundle package, and here's my offer." They're like, mm -hmm. "Okay, you know, yeah." yeah. And that that bankruptcy attorney knows who that lender is or that asset manager is. So that that would be a good call to say, you know, yeah, we can help out. Can we get in touch and see what we can do? You know, if you don't want, but this could help you not having foreclosure on your record. I mean, it's basically on our business record, not really her own own record, you know, because she's doing chapter 11. So, yeah, definitely that could be totally a viable option. So, good call, Graham. One more question. Yeah. Um, when they were talking, Graham brought up the excess funds and uh -huh. he said, you know, if the property's still in your name, you're entitled to the excess funds. Mm -hmm. But from my understanding of the limited time I've dealt with this, a lot of times doesn't the lender tran they remove the seller's name from the deed and replace it with theirs when it's going into foreclosure? No, not till it's sold out. Sold the, out meaning already sold to auction, when the auction that hammer is done, it's sold. So then it's still uh, it is still in the name of the homeowner and it's still they have a redemption period after that. Like depending on what state you're in, you know, it's anywhere like in California is five days, but like in some other state, it's like three years. You know, so it's not it's it doesn't come off their name. You know. So in that. Definitely, they cannot 
get any more than that their payoff is. So any excess fund will go to the homeowner. The reason she is not eligible to have those because those are a business is on the business loan. The home are on their business. It's not under her own name, but the individual homeowner, it's going to be, um, you know, qualify for those fund because they're just one and just one house and them. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. All right, good stuff. Um, next week, what we'll do is on Wednesday, between now and next week, we'll have more calls. Mm -hmm. uh, starting on Monday, we really started hitting it harder and we're going to pick up momentum. So next week, we'll have more calls to listen to. We'll have QA and mm -hmm. Ali um, kind of flag some of the good ones or questions, you know, and then I'm going to... I'm going to try to do a better job of stopping that other Zoom right on time so we can hit the ground running here. And then we can do a quick Q&A and jump right into call calibrations. And hopefully uh, the people making calls, all the team members making calls, get a ton of value out of it. Um, I, I try to be on the you know office space also. So if you guys need any help or anything. You can just thank you for that reminder, guys. Uh, Nahid, uh, hopefully, tomorrow I told the um data team to uh, Nahid has her own office or she, she was supposed to. I, I created it yesterday, I don't know, it wasn't there today. Yesterday, I just didn't see it today. Yeah, so uh, um, she'll have her own office. So, all the SEAL team members, she's going to try to hop in with us at our uh, what is it, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, team meetings in the seal room but also she'll be in her office like when she is you know in her office you guys can jump in there tell ali and then um and then ali will either hop in there with you or tell you like yeah go ahead and talk to nahi then you can go in there and um plus you're you're in the chat right nahi jun on the seal team chat right i added you the admins added you i i i have you and Nassim, but not uh, not in check and I think you're an admin on there. If you could add Nahid on to that chat, please. Um we have a, a chat. It might be a little overwhelming because you're gonna get probably like 30, 40 messages a day in total. Okay. <laughs> I don't do, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I appreciate you hopping on tonight. It was another great session. I learned a lot and I'm looking forward to next Wednesday again. No problem. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. And I'm here if you guys need any question or anything. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, we're going right over tonight. All right, everyone. Love you, Nahid. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Have a great night. Have a great night.